Yes, the Rock and Roll Cafe is open for business. Oshin and Audrey join me as they always do. Good morning. Hey. How are we today, well, lads? You well? Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> are you going to be all right for this day? Quite a mixed bag for you today in the Rock and Roll well, Cafe. Well, it's kind of cool for me because this is the first time I've been on without having to bring any food in. Yeah, so why didn't I'm, you I'm enjoying that. In? I thought you were given homework to do. I was given plenty of homework, and mm. um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, it's been a while since I've done yeah. my leaving, but you know. Uh, I don't think he did his homework. I He's did. stuttering there. Yeah, he did bring stuff in. <laughs> Uh, now the, we're, we're bringing in our competitive eater now in a minute. Um, he's going to be taking on the burgers, which are on wait. the other side. Yeah, yeah I can wait if, for that. If you go to newstalk.ie, you'll be able to watch this man. He's going to eat uh, about ten quarter I'm pounders. I'm feeling nervous for him. Is anybody else? He I'm trains getting sweaty for this. palms, and I know, no. but I was anxious for him. Is out he outside? There and is there a sick bucket in here? All those kind of things, of course. No, I, I, I actually, I, I, I was. I thought it was great to hear about this fellow because I didn't think they actually existed in Ireland. A friend of mine actually directs that TV show, Man vs. Food. Yeah. Have you ever seen it? You have, so yeah. I've heard loads of stories about competitive eaters and uh, what they get up to, how they train. And you'd be surprised. Like Normally you think about people who are competitive eaters, they're usually may- maybe being quite rotund or slightly yeah. big. Invariably they're not. And then this fella isn't actually, just so I know. But... Um, yeah, it's this there's, there's like all sorts of regimes they have. They um train, they have like special kind of uh, uh stomach exercises that yeah, they have to they expand do. their stomachs. It's all kind of mad, you know? Yeah. See we do a lot of that casually without really realising it. <laughs> yeah. You have your points. <laughs> You're but you training do expect, your stomach. You do expect, you know, a man to come in with a string vest on and <laughs> smelling of beer and cigarettes. Well, I'd say burping. there are competitive listeners listening to that right here now <laughs> jumping up and down and saying, What a negative stereotype. Well, that sounds like my Saturday morning, morning routine. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you go on the radio and characterize me like that they're saying <laughs> putting down their pint. Do you know the reason we, we decided to do this? Uh, we were reading in the papers during the week, a man, he, he passed into a coma in America in a competitive you. eating competition. So there are risks involved with this. I think Homer Simpson did the same, didn't he? Homer is actually a fictional character. <laughs> 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 Don't say that. I can't I believe I know that. Yeah, I had to break that to you on live radio. Sorry about that. Now. But um, this man ate biscuits in America. He was in a competitive eating competition of biscuits, and he ate over four hundred biscuits. But you know how many, how many calories were in those biscuits? Oh God, go on. Sixty-four thousand. <laughs> he ate sixty-four thousand calories. And in, 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 in what duration of time? I don't know how long, because yeah. we, we have our competitive and biscuits, eater. biscuits, like, there's no moisture there, so it's all this dryness. That must be spitting back out. And yeah. I can't imagine it. <laughs> I, mean, I, think of, I always think about that movie Stand By Me. Do you remember, yeah. remember Lardass? Remember yeah. the guy who was eating all the yeah, blueberry yeah, yeah, pies? Yeah, yeah. And then he pukes all over the com- <laughs> other competitors and all over the audience. That could be ahead of us. that could happen today. <laughs> yeah, I was like, if that's going to happen, I'm going to sit over on the other side of the room. <laughs> so, um, so actually, well, I don't think that's going to happen today because habits. from what I'm, I was, was chatting to the man outside the studio there and uh, he is uh, well on top of his game. Is he? he is, he is. He's been training? Yeah, he's well on top. Great. Um, <laughs> Neil Thomas is our competitive eater. Can I just ask you, Audrey, what have you actually brought into the studio and why? Oh, now, well, first of all, you asked me to bring in these tarts. Well, we made more than tarts. Because, th- th- because there that's was, for somebody else to eat. There was uproar last week because <laughs> the, the, the recipe didn't go up so on the website. So set those aside. They're, they're for in a little while. Right, they're going to be... And then these other two are just two pastas because these... Uh, these two professors in New York have uh, done a study on food. Now, it's been on all the news this week about spoons, to, uh, food tasting different on plastic spoons and stainless steel spoons and all that. But there's also a study gone on with uh, the portion size that we take. So uh, they took 60 participants in New York and they directed them to a buffet. Right. Uh, Sounds like a recipe they, for disaster. There was two, two, separate, uh, two separate buffets, so 30 each. And on one buffet, there was a a pasta with a tomato sauce. And on the other one was a pasta with an Alfredo sauce, which is white. And they gave them uh, red and white plates randomly. And they then secretly weighed the food that they were taking. We should do this. And it we turns should do this out, in news talk. It turns out, to cut out the science, it turns out that if you contrast your food, so if your food is contrasted, so if you have red food yeah. on a white plate, yeah. you'll take less right. than if you have red food on a red plate. Okay? So if you look at those... 
Which yeah. do you think? Do you think they're the same? Or do you um, think? There looks like there's more food in the coloured plate. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> 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 well, this is the study. So, so they're, I mean... They're saying that you take... You'll actually take less food... Right. Putting it on. So a, if there's a, a contrast, if you're if you're eating, well, it's more defined. Bright red food, and yeah. you put it on a white or plate, green you'll food, take less of or it. Or brown on yeah on a contrasting plate. So it makes sense, really, in one way. I don't know whether there's much truth to it, yeah. but it's more defined. The food is more defined on that plate. So your advice is to bring a white plate with you to Carveries, <laughs> <laughs> and then you will eat less. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're right into Homer Simpson territory now. <laughs> he is bringing his own plate to Carveries because he brings a big plate with them. Huge to plate. To get more on. Focus. This isn't going to work. <laughs> I have my huge big white plate with me. Well, that's why a lot of the fine dining restaurants have those gigantic plates with these tiny little mm. slivers of food in them. Right? Yeah. It's just to, to make you think that you're getting a little bit more. Yeah. Even though invariably you're not. Yeah. Right. Are we eating this during the break? What? <laughs> no, it's not. I'm surprised it didn't last this wants. far. You can't bring any food in here without it getting That's wolfed true. down. Um, but the recipe for the uh, rhubarb and strawberry tart is going to be up on newstalk.ie because people were saying they tried to do it last week and we didn't manage to get it up there in time. So it could be up there in, uh, st- straight after the show. He said it to be careful. The competitive eater, Neil Thomas, is on the way. Tom Dunn on News Talk 106 to 108. Uh, you're very welcome back. Uh, the Rock and Roll Cafe moving into a very uh, interesting phase now because we've been joined by Neil Thomas. Good morning, Neil. Hello. Competitive eater, eh? Yes, absolutely. How, how did you get into this? Uh, well, I always had a big appetite when I was a kid, so it just uh, I realised the more exercise you do, the more you can eat. Yeah. So I kind of got into gym instruction and uh, fitness. Yeah. And uh, from there, I just went online and I realised competitive eating is the fastest growing sport in America at the moment so right yeah. is it really it doesn't surprise me competitive <laughs> eating is the fastest growing sport in America in the, the last uh, in the last 10 in the years. world's and it's most called a obese sport. country it's sport they've actually this is unbelievable this is like little chocolate donuts in Saturday Night Live the, 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 the food of champions when I'm preparing for the Olympics I like to eat little chocolate donuts this is incredible so when did you actually have your first competitive event um I just started about three years ago. I did uh, some challenges for YouTube and that kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, then I got talking to the American champions, like, and uh, just got into it from there. Are they like, big lads? They're not. No, they're not all big. Some of them are. Isn't the hot dog champion a tiny little Japanese yeah. fella? Yeah. 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 Is he really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Japanese. Yeah. 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 You wouldn't. And he's going against these four hundred pound obese. <laughs> crazy looking oafs and yeah. then he just kind of saunters on in and just he's like a machine isn't he really yeah and do yeah. you win anything with these competitions yeah hey, all no, you can eat I haven't okay. in America now I mean the champion won he earned 250 grand oh. last year oh, oh Jesus <laughs> so it's big it's big business over there suddenly it all makes sense <laughs> doesn't it mm. is so that what, just a lifetime supply of Nathan's hot dogs or anything <laughs> <laughs> I see. Have you done some of these things? Six pounds of baked beans in one minute? I have not done that. Something to look forward to. <laughs> um, 15 burritos in eight minutes? I have not done that either. 65 <laughs> hard boiled eggs in six minutes? No. <laughs> what on, have then. you done? <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, 18 quarter pounders. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, 10 quarter pounders in 18 minutes and uh, 25 large fried eggs in under 20 minutes. And. <laughs> mountain and noodles <laughs> in uh, like about 20 minutes so just Brilliant. I'm trying to up, up it each time And what are you going to do this morning? Uh, I'm going to eat quarter pounders because we time. have in front of us now I better just say thank you to um, Brasserie 7 restaurant on Cable Street they've supplied us with 10 quarter pounders Do, would they, have you taken a look oh take a look there now just to make sure is there a standard issue quarter pounder? You look quite horrified. You looked a bit shocked there. They look pretty good. Are they good? Oh, are they, he's happy. Are they big? Are they a bit They're big? They're big. They're big. Is that a problem? There's a lot of bun. <laughs> a lot of bun. <laughs> Is there too much bun? No, it's fine. Right. Um, did you prepare for this today? Yeah, I did. I did what some did you do? Uh, training. You go to the oh, you can eat buffet. You have to stretch out your stomach. So I went and I just basically gorged for a while and then... <laughs> yesterday are you going to barf yesterday, in these places yeah. no <laughs> yesterday morning and uh, can then, we see your belly 
Right, you can see her. And you just stand up and you just <laughs> see before. It just, uh, He's skinny, though. Like, yeah, you are relatively skinny. What weight are you? Um, I don't track my weight, but I think I'm around... I'm around 13, 14 stone, I think. You don't look that. Sure he doesn't. No, I'd no. say 12. No, I'd yeah. say 12. Well, I guess you're around 12. You're lying. Yeah. <laughs> Your belly looks... Maybe you know, without the belly. I think before I said, um, I was under 11 stone, so I have gained weight since. Right. Well, there'd be something wrong with the food if you hadn't. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, Are you going to eat one now? Just like, go, We maybe In watch you eating the first one. Just to go, is there, like, is it dramatic? As you, he immediately reaches for a pint of water. This is the first stage, is it? Yeah, you need the water. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we're just going to watch you eating the first one, just to see what, because there'll be ten more. I won't describe them all. Okay. One by I'll one. do my best. Right, but just the first one. Relatively <laughs> normal bites right there. Yeah, relatively. <laughs> two big, big, thick kind of bites. Okay, gone and out of kind it. of and few sips of quite water. Quite a lot of water. Um... I don't know if speed is is a thing. It's just gone eleven thirty two. By the way, <laughs> out of that, he's fast enough, isn't he? You wouldn't you wouldn't eat as fast as that, Oshin, would you? I don't know. I reckon I could. <laughs> but I just don't think I could do that amount. But it isn't really against but, the clock, is it? Or it is? Uh, you, well, no, show okay. it's twelve. Sorry, I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting concerned here. <laughs> you can watch this on newstalk.ie. <laughs> we need uh, a soundtrack. Yeah. I don't know if it's and, and gentlemen, if you've ever been taken to task for your eating habits. This would be a good one to show your beloved one. I'd say, now look, see, I'm oh not. God. I'm amazed by the water because I actually thought the water would uh, fill up, <laughs> would fill you yeah. up, and you wouldn't be able to eat as many. But obviously, I was wrong there because Neil is lashing back the water. Mm. He has a pint of water already gone. Yeah, I mean, we have four oh, more pints of water though. They were that's not too bad. Two minutes now, one minute. No, about Just a minute in now, God. and I have to say the quarter pounders are huge, huge, <laughs> huge. They really are. Um, I don't think I'd be able to finish one of them. Do you? No. I'd be struggling. Yeah. But if, if I was a kid in America yeah. and I found out that there was actually a sport for competitive eating, I think I probably would have, I'd probably have given up all the other sports. I'd be like, Mommy, I don't want to do basketball yeah. no more. I, I, you know, like, I could see. be a competitive eater. Yeah, that would be an issue if there were, if you went, you know, the first day of secondary school and there's all stands for gymnastics and squash and football and then there's one just full of food and competitive eating. <laughs> Which one's going to have the biggest queue? I don't know. <laughs> so he's, He's about a quarter of the burger left at yeah. the moment. So and three quarters of a pint of water gone. A relatively healthy colour, isn't he? <laughs> he's a high-ish colour. No, he's not. No, completely normal. I well, think he looks it's very happy. Slightly. He's giving us the eye. The Hi, person, but he is, he's, he's really able, in the zone. He's able to maintain to eye contact with us while he's doing this. Which is <laughs> Don't make him laugh. <laughs> I am no. quite happy that there's a computer in front of us so that if right. he does get sick, I don't actually see it coming out of his mouth. You can hear what's going on, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but uh, interesting... And, uh, I don't think he's uh, going to uh, make the time, you know that? Five. What? Ta- oh. Well, we're it's it's eleven thirty-five nearly now at the moment. So oh, the burger's gone. gone. Look, there's it. One more bite, and that's gone. I say. Why? What Whoa. is the time? What is the time for per burger? Ten of these. One no, burger down. He's he doesn't have to finish ten. Let's just make that. I'm concerned. Oh yes, he does. <laughs> oh yes, he does. Um, right, Neil. Just <laughs> I won't check in with you on every burger, but how was that? It's fine. <laughs> tasty. <It's very> tasty. <laughs> you needed to see his face there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, um, just nine more to go there, Neil. Uh, you want to just catch your breath? Oh, Will you be able to make them time-wise? Do you think? Um, maybe. Right. Do you talk to lunchtime? Is twelve? I'm sure, John. <laughs> yeah. Stay for a minute. Um, <laughs> Yes, if anyone wants to take up the challenge of trying to eat burgers, uh, do let us know. If you'd like to become a competitive eater, we can bring you in. Um, there is a thing called the cinnamon challenge. Have you heard of that? I bit? have heard of that. But you try that? Uh, I don't think that qualifies as competitive eating. No, it's not. What, what is, is it? it? You try and take a spoonful of cinnamon into your mouth. It's nearly impossible. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Because it's so dry. Yeah, so dry. You just explode. 
you just do a cough and you just cinnamon goes everywhere. That's why we're not doing it. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, you, you carry on your own time there now, Neil. We'll, we'll chat to you again in a second. We still have the Silver Seas to join us in the studio, but we're going to see, going to talk to Jonathan. Jonathan's in Cork today's house, what's coming up on News Talk Lunchtime. Uh, the cinnamon challenge. That'd be great radio. Okay, still to come on News Talk Lunchtime a little later on. A woman who took a legal challenge against Copperface Jacks after injuring herself on the dance floor has lost her case in the High Court. We'll have the details on that. A listener suggested we do this during the week, Tom. We listened back to the news bulletins from the day the Anglo tapes were recorded, particularly the 18th and 19th of September. How much the Irish media and the public were in the dark about the extent of the crisis. The Justice Minister saying bankers at Anglo appear to have operated in a moral vacuum and will be live at Carton House as well. The Irish Open is underway on the second day. Three-way tie at the top of the moment. Jose Maria Lathabel, Peter Ulhein and Raphael Jacqueline, the best of the Irish Shane Lowry. Three shots further back. Uh, he's on 500. The leader's on 800. News Talk Lunchtime with you after your burger marathon at midday. Yeah, sounds like interesting listening to hear what we were up to back on the days <laughs> when those tapes have been recorded, I'd say. Yeah, do you know, and what's worse is I was on one of the bulletins. And, uh, and I'm kind of sitting there going, if only I knew. Well, I can remember listening to radio at the time of the meetings and people were saying what exactly went on at those meetings of government. And here we are five years later asking exactly the same question. What went on at those meetings? It's incredible. Um, John, thank you very much for that. Look forward to it coming up at uh, 12 o'clock. We're going to have the Silver Seas joining us in studio. We're going to keep track on Neil after this. Tom Dunn on News Talk 106 to 108. <laughs> You're very welcome back. Um, just gone 11.41. I don't know, Daniel, if you can hear the little jingle in the background. It just ended there. It's the best things in life. It's by a bank called the Silver Seas. Did you ever hear of them? Um, I'm honoured and proud to be here as a ambassador for the Silver Seas, Tom. Thank I, I, you for okay. having me. The Silver Seas is the theme tune to this uh, this show. Is that best right? Best things in life, yeah. It's the opening jingle that the, the listeners... All Yay! Right! <laughs> yes, <laughs> and the reason Daniel, of all people, would be excited is because he is. I knew it was the gonna, overseas. I knew it was going to be a theme for something. I just didn't know what it was. Yeah, it's the theme to this show. People hear that show, mm-hmm. that, that theme, all the way through. And it's show. a new stock. Yeah, yeah. And we're delighted to have you as part of it. Um, delighted to be um, here. Welcoming Daniel from the Silver Seas. They're in playing tomorrow night in um, Whelan's, isn't it? Tomorrow night in Whelan's? That's right. Yep. Whelan's. And then Sunday night you're playing down in Westport as well. That's right. Um, Westport. I'll, I'll tell people all about you in a moment. And, all right. Uh, and the, the love uh, that dares not speak the name. <laughs> Which I've <laughs> don't want to make you, make you uncomfortable. No, uh, no. See no, more no, of that no. in a moment. But um, I'm just dis- it's sort of, what's the word where you're, it's, it's, it's disconcerting. Yeah. What's happening to my left is disconcerting. <laughs> yeah. There's a man <laughs> eating a lot of food beside you. And the thick pocket. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the part of it that really kind of sends it over the edge into the disconcerting department is that, that thing. It's okay if he's just sitting there eating, but that is not okay. <laughs> you shouldn't be too disconcerted by this. You are from the country where competitive eating is the number one growing sport. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I don't know what to say about it, but I'm I'm I'm. There's a lot of variety in the world. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> okay. We're America's turning, a big country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Turkey in a moment country. because um, I have to give uh, a little competition to so legend Bobby Womack has confirmed an infant date at the Olympia on the 9th of July. It's one night only and absolutely, definitely no extra dates will be added. Uh, the latest album, The Greatest Man of the Universe, is absolutely brilliant. It's been out since last um, summer. <laughs> it was hailed by critics and fans as one of his greatest works. That was co-produced by Damon Albarn. Um, his first album in 19 years. So if you want to win tickets to go and see him, just text the word Bobby to 53106. We'll pick winners for the end of the show. So that's the Olympia on the 9th of July. Sorry, I did laugh slightly during that competition, Diana, because it's just put on my screen that you are actually a vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. Because I actually, I write a column once a month in, in the Irish Times. And uh, what I do is I get food recipes from rock stars. And I feature Daniel just in May, just gone. Oh. And it, his recipe they gave me is a West African vegetable stew. <laughs> so there's, a, there's another reason why he's slightly disconcerted by the sight of 10 burgers. And the next smell. To more to the point. Well, no, I mean, you live in Nashville, Tennessee, like I do. You're used to people just sort of with you know, various kinds of animals uh, prepared different ways and everywhere you turn, so I'm used to that. It's just the, um, he's so like, demure about it. And kind of, like, it's so business as usual, you know. Is that the, is it, you know, that's the part that that he's uh, he's kind of applied himself to the but task. He's confident. Stage, he's you know? very happy, very just, confident. Yeah, he's, he's on about burger four, four, three. What's your, what's your name? 
Neil. <laughs> Neil. Um, how many have you eaten so far, Neil? Um, Just, uh, don't speak with your mouth full. <laughs> <laughs> three, three, two. Four. He's oh. on his fourth. He's on his fourth. Wow, he's on his fourth burger. Brilliant. So he's making great progress. Neil, you didn't intend this, but this is a big moment for me being on this show, and you're kind of stealing my thunder over there <laughs> with, these, with these hamburgers. <laughs> so just eat your burger. Yeah, is the bottom line there? <laughs> Daniel, I have to say, um, to talk about it, it is your moment. I think Silver Seas are a band I've wanted on the show for a, a long time because I can remember um, Shadow Revenge, when it was released, uh, was sent in to me by EMI. Um, the greatest record label on earth, may I say, who will be closing their their doors in this country in, in was that right? a few days' time, July the twelfth. Mm-hmm. Closing doors. I'm very okay. sad about. Wow. Um, but I was driving with it, and um, the first song came on, and I have the system where I put a, a dot or three dots after a song that I think is excellent. Okay. So to remind me which ones I'm playing. Okay. Yeah. And as I went through, I broke my system when I was using five and six dots. Too. Oh. Sensational. Album. Thank you. What was going on in your world when that was released? Because it seemed to take everyone by surprise. No one knew about you. It seemed. Well, um, I mean, I existed in a kind of a bubble of my own grandiosity at that point, if, if you could refer to it that way. You know, I thought that I'd done something really incredible, and I thought that it would only be a matter of time until everybody else thought that. And then now um, I don't even remember. <laughs> I remember a quote from you because I was fine. I was I rang Pete and EMI to say who are this band, and um, I read interviews with you. And there was one quote you talked about talking with your wife and saying, mm-hmm. "I'm just going to keep releasing records, and they can't re- they can't ignore me forever." Yeah, we're still on that plan. You know, um, uh, this one is a, another notch up. We um, you know tried to bring out all the uh, the heavy artillery and. Uh, you know, I just, it, I don't know. I have a gift. I don't know what else to say. I, I just, I, I, it's not really that hard for me. Right. But, um, but I recognize that it's special. But, you know, it doesn't feel special in Nashville because so many people there ply their craft with the guitar and the vocals and the, and the songwriting and the verses and the lyrics and the bridges and they write all day, every day. So I don't feel very special. And I think it's been an asset in some ways. And is that what you do? I mean, when you're not doing this. Yeah. That's what's the, what I do. What's, that's what's right. the rest of your life? I'm a I'm a brick and mortar guy, man. I, I I get up every day and I go into an office and I write a song every day, pretty every much. Every day, yeah. yeah. I um I have I have collaborators uh, yeah. that I work with, and um, I have uh, artists that I work with that are they'll sometimes there'll be a direction. Sometimes you'll agree with the direction they're going. Sometimes you say, well, what, what if we try something like this? Um, sometimes I get cuts, and sometimes I don't. And does that mean you're writing songs for for other artists? Yeah, for for pop mm-hmm. stars. Um, really not big pop stars at the moment. Um, some indie kind of rock ar- acts and some country acts you might have heard of. I've had, um, you know, Tim McGraw has recorded really? one of his songs or Leanne Walmack, uh, a band called Love and Theft, a band called the Eli Young Band. Uh, okay, these great. are sort of up and coming Nashville, um, you know, right. kind of country rock bands. I so guess, there, yeah. you're writing for them, but, but these, the songs on Silver Seas song uh, albums. Yeah, this is where I do whatever I want. Okay. This is where, this is my vision. This is my, um, there's no constraint of like it's got to make sense or it's got to um, be you know but you still it's still got to reach people you pick up on a lot of, when I was playing it would pick up a lot of um, of your love of, of other artists in it. Yeah. There was, there's a bit of Hall and Oates you pick up oh yeah I grew up on that stuff really? you know yeah come on hey great come on <laughs> I've managed to forget about you for about five seconds <laughs> how you doing he's still, there he's still eating <laughs> what number are you on <laughs> he's, he's funny does everybody know what's going on out yeah, there? For, if you're just tuning in, um, in the corner of the studio, Neil, who's a competitive eater, is working his way through ten burgers. There's um, also several tantalizing sort of vegetarian-oriented things around. We knew you were coming, and my wife baked a cake. That is actually the truth. Um, that it's, is so It's a sweet. rhubarb pie, which I'm not wow. going to offer to you now because I think it might interfere with your vocal. Yeah, I and understand that. I particularly like it. Would you have to do a song for us now? Uh, wait, whatever works best for yeah, you. Yeah, we would love one now. One from the new album. All right, be great. Yeah, let me get this my. The, um, this is. Um, I've said it many times on the show. I think it's a uh, very special band and very special song. So I'm delighted to have them. We're going to have lots more as well. We're going to after the show to record lots more stuff. So this is Daniel from the Silver Seeds. This is a um, kind of a romantic number. So if uh, the one you love is close at hand, uh, I don't know. <laughs>
can still see more Each night when I go out You the one I hope will walk in the door I know you will Because I'm the one who loves you Can't you tell I'm all sweet in your life I'm the one who sit for you, baby You know I'll always be your guy I'm the one who won't ever stop Believing until I I'm the one the guys they may tell pretty lies they don't know you they don't know you like I do of an angel if you don't mind me saying so thanks thanks so much um this is definitely a first uh with, uh, with this going neil, on right neil i don't here. know if it interfered with his eating uh, as you were performing there but I, I, did that I, haste did you feel a quickening <laughs> of the mastication or, or, or i i, I sensed uh, just they were flowing better for you the burgers <laughs> during that um well when when um shadow revenge came out and was uh, released uh, that's when I went back and started finding stuff about you and I found the Country Life album oh yeah um, what happened that when you released it because that's another absolutely beautiful album well we did um, we had sort of a plan for that which was there was going to be no electric guitars allowed in the band they were just like not yeah. allowed and, and so we did do a, a short tour in the US with a band who called Guster who were sort of big fans of ours and we played in some pretty big uh, rooms with them um, and I think every song on that record got licensed on either really? a film or or a TV show in in um, every single one. Yeah, in in, in one way or another. Um, some larger than others, but um, that was a really good. Uh, that was a successful project yeah. for us, um, and and um, it was but, really fun. And people people like the the minimalistic aspect of that record. Yeah. Um, High Society song from yeah. that. If I if I wrote a song like High Society, I would expect it to be number one the world over. <laughs> Does it not break your heart when 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 you write a song as good as that, as beautiful as that, and it isn't number one? The you world know, over? you do you do feel those you do feel that from time to time. I mean, that's par for the course. Is that the expression? Is it a golf yeah. golf par expression? Course, yeah, the Irish <laughs> Open. That's par for the moment. course. Yeah. If you're going to get into a job like this where you create things, you know, you think they're going to. I write songs all the time. I'm like, this is going to be huge, and and sometimes. It's not most of the time it isn't, but but you know you it is a great it is a great honor and and in the in the moments where I'm sane I realize how lucky I am to do what I do if that makes sense yeah it kind of smooths over the other stuff but your feathers do get ruffled sometimes when you hear some some something that's kind of schlocky yeah you know in place of what could be great beautiful songs <laughs> um, have we actually a caller now just yeah yeah Mark's on the phone Mark good morning how are you today. He's gone away. Not to worry. Um, so, are, we, are you are you at the end of your? Are you finished? Do you, you still have a Burgery. while to go? He <laughs> looks a little green around the gills. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I keep referring to you as he. That's Mark, really rude. Neil, no, yeah, it's yeah, really, it's, really really not. Not. it's, it's 11:55. <laughs> it's it's kind of we have to kind of call a day. How many did you manage to do? 
that that's the fifth mm. right so they, are they, is that because they're but bigger burgers than normal or, or no I'm more of an endurance eater rather than a speed eater Okay. Enjoyment eater rather than and the speed eater. And that's what eater. I think, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Right, so you have more well, the You could keep going and by I could. 12, I could 30, keep going. You'd, fi- you'd finish. There's, there's no t-shirt for you. You haven't won any. No. <laughs> you don't, you don't <laughs> want to get sick of hamburgers, heaven forbid. Yeah. I, <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> you've, you've just had five burgers. That's all you've done today, I'm afraid, Neil. There's, there's nothing more to it than that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> okay, so where do you go from here? Let's keep talking about this, Neil. Where, 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 what's your next stop? Um, I have a competition <laughs> coming up uh, okay. in the next couple of weeks against one I mean, like, do I just look like five years down the road? Oh. <laughs> don't think ahead in the competitive eating world. No, they don't. No, no. they don't go there. Um, there. That yeah. brings us, sadly, brings us to an end uh, today on the show. But, Neil, thank you very much for coming in. Thank well you. Well done, Neil. And, well done, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure again. We're going to get more songs for you now, which I'll play for people next week. We're going to catch the hang on. Thanks Great. very much for coming in. Uh, Oshin and Audrey, a pleasure as always. Didn't get to talk about your camel with the lambs. Oh, we'll talk about it next time. We will again.